Hello Parkview bassists and anyone interested in a quick overview of the Zoom B3 bass effect modeling pedal. Uh, if you haven't already, I'd recommend checking out the uh, tutorial we did on the G5 guitar pedal because a lot of the functionality on that uh, unit is the same as this one. And this will be a much quicker overview and, um, and certainly geared more towards specifically the bass players at Parkview Church. Uh, but if you are just looking for a general overview, you will get some good information out of this as well. Uh, let's just start with a quick look at the back panel here. Uh, so we have uh, our input with an active passive switch. If you have any effects in front of this, uh, or you're using a bass with active pickups, meaning you have a battery, and you want it set to active, I think where most of us are going to be passive. Our DI out, which we need to have set to post uh, to get any benefit out of the pedal at all. Otherwise, it's basically just... A, uh, a, a DI box. Uh, so to get any benefit out of the pedal we need to have that set to post uh, effect so that the signal exits after it's been affected. Uh, ground and lift which we'll leave to the audio technician to let us know if they need that changed. Um, our outputs here and then a control in so we can use uh, either a foot switch for say tap tempo or a volume pedal that sort of thing uh, or an expression pedal. I've promised uh, make, to make that available to the guitarist as well for the G5, so they'll probably want to use the uh, switch for tap tempo, which means there could be a volume pedal available for this unit if we need it. I don't really see that being the case because we can mute the signal uh, using the tuner built in. Uh, off on an eco, I would set it to on because eco it will put the unit into a standby mode after about 25 minutes, uh, so just stick with on. Okay, front panel here. Basically the way this unit is set up uh, is it has um, has these bays uh, or three banks of effects. Okay, one thing that's different about the Zoom product is that included in one of these needs to be your amp modeling. Um, so uh, it's not separate, it's included as one of, one of these. So basically uh, within each bank we have the three editing wheels which allow us to edit parameters um, on, on whatever effect or amplifier we're dealing with. Page button takes us through the different pages there and then basically in order to change the effect we use type to go through some of the different effects that are there. Okay, The effects are grouped kind of together in groups. It's one big bank of effects and amps all together but they are grouped together at least so as I go out, as I'm, if I'm at a DI box and I go around, I'm going to get some different DIs. Uh, if I, I'm at an EQ, and I'm going to get a different EQ, so there's a parametric EQ. Uh, and then if I'm at a compressor, I'm going to find some other compressors nearby. Okay, so eventually if I keep going, I would hit the EQs, or I would hit the amplifiers, or the modulation effects, or whatever. What I've done is I've set everyone up with a patch named, named for them. Um, so what is a patch? A patch is a set of, of these three banks makes a patch, okay? So everyone's got a patch for their own name and then what you can do then is you can change your amp if you want. Uh, the, you know, it doesn't have to be a DI pedal. What I've put on for everybody is the Sans Amp um, bass driver, which some of you may be familiar with. It's very popular in studios and good for uh, churches as well that are going direct. Um, it's a fantastic preamp. Uh, there's also Ampeg, you know, and your SVT, and all those classic amps and cabinets combinations uh, that are modeled on here as well. So it doesn't have to be a DI, an active DI or preamp. It can be an amp with a cab simulation and that sort of thing, depending on what you want to do. Uh, we've always, although we've had a cabinet on stage, um, it's always been a direct signal, anyways. So, so uh, a preamp is is really all we need. But leave that with you guys. Okay, and then I gave everyone a graphic EQ, which you could obviously use as a boost, or you could have it on all the time and have it as a global uh, EQ, and then an optical compressor. Um, and uh, you may want to keep that one on all the time, too, as we dial in some nice compression, whatever. I will mention that your amp does need to be on all the time in order to get, you know, any modeling going on with your sound. Okay, so in order to have any kind of amp modeling on, your amp needs to be on basically all the time. You can have more than one amp. You can do all amps. Actually, you might not be able to because you might see DSL full come up, which means the memory is full. The amps, in particular, use a lot of memory because you can see there's there's more parameters, three pages of parameters versus 
one page of parameters. Um, so the amps take up a lot of memory, so it's good to just pick an amp that you like and uh, get a good sound. Um, I know as a bass player I'm a lot less finicky about my sound than I am as a guitar player because you know a good bass sound is a good bass sound. So um, it's kind of what it comes down to. I know some people would argue with me about that. but um, Okay, so to select patches, uh, if I hold down number one here, I'll get into the the patch selection area and uh, we can see we're on the patch name for Mike um, and basically using two and three I can bank up or down through the patches so zero is Ben, one is Mike, two is Bridget, etc, etc. Okay and if I hold, if I do two at a time then I'm going to bank uh, up and down through um, the different uh, letters here. So it goes up to J um, so there's obviously tons of space for people to have more than one patch. If someone's like, you know what, I'd like two or three patches to try different sounds and things like that, that's fine. Uh, you can um, you can rename it uh, and, and have it, we can move some patches around so that you have all your patches together. You could take a whole bank if you want. You could say, you know what, I'd like to just take bank J and fill it with patches and experiment. That's totally fine. Uh, there's plenty of room to be able to do that. Okay, so once I pick the patch that I want, uh, then I can hold and I'm back and obviously everyone's been set up with the same thing to start uh, just to kind of get a good start and then you can kind of go from there. Okay. Um, patch select will also allow you to kind of cycle up and down through those uh, manually. Tap tempo, rhythm to go along with the looper which won't really get into. Okay, total basically gets me into the patch editing screen so the overall level of the patch. Uh, this is like a wet dry uh, balance for your effects, okay, uh, and then you can change the order that the effects are just by twisting these guys here. Um, you can rename it. You can decide what your control pedal uh, or your switch is going to do. Okay, so that's the total screen. Under global, uh, master level, um, so we need to make sure if the audio tech needs a different level here, master level, uh, you can change the signal path um, and then screen contrast, some stuff to do with the battery, uh, USB audio signals for recording and that sort of thing in the firmware version. So all that's found on the global. The most important thing would be the master level found under the global there. Okay. Um, for the tuner, uh, if you hold it down the tuner for one second, it will bypass and go to the tuner. If you hold it down for two seconds, which is what we normally probably going to want to do, you'll see it changes to mute. Uh, so that will mute the signal and then any button will take you home. Uh, that's kind of the main thing there. So that's basically the gist of it. Um, if you have any questions about the product, you can email me directly at john at stringnoise with a z.com. Uh, as well, you can catch me on a Sunday morning. And I'm sure, uh, knowing you guys, I think you're going to have a fun time just kind of messing around with it and finding sounds that you like. Um, but if you run into anything, let me know. The manual is available on the Zoom website too. If you just search for Zoom B3 manual, you'll get it right away. Uh, downloadable as a PDF that has a list of all the patches that they've kind of pre-done and the effects uh, are all in there as well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, any questions let me know and uh, if you were watching uh, just apart from Parkview Church people, just thanks for watching and I hope you found some useful information.